Hello everyone, um, today I'm going to be revisiting an older tutorial, one of my first tutorials of geometry nodes, which includes how to make a, a very stylized com uh, constellation effect in geometry nodes that is able to be controlled mesh level wise, distortion wise, and a bunch of uh, other features. I'll link below uh, the original tutorial, which in involved um, the old version of geometry nodes before fields were was introduced. Today I'm going to show you guys how to create the effect and some improvements on the effect in geometry nodes fields. So let's uh, create a new file and hop right into it. Alright, so in this new file we're going to start by adding a plane and just like last time, we're going to use this plane as our basis for um, for the effect. So we're just going to extrude alongside it, rotate it, give an interesting pattern. You could also create this procedurally if you like but I like to start out with an irregular shape. I find it gives me more of a natural sort of pattern. So let's slide this over here and open up geometry nodes and start up a new um, a new network. We're going to call this constellation to keep organized and pin this so that we can stay highlighted onto it. So first thing we're going to do is if we turn on wireframes you see the it's a bit too simple in fact I'm gonna slide these down here and we're get first we're gonna do subdivide the mesh this is just a simple subdivision add a couple more loops into it uh, maybe just leave it at one now we're gonna do a set position we're going to bring in a, you could bring in a noise texture. I like to bring in a Musgrave texture, set it to 4D. Vector math, set this to scale. Plug the height into scale and in the, in the vector input normal. Plug the normal in and plug that into the offset and you start to see we are offsetting our geometry. I'm going to set this a little bit lower to like around yeah here uh, so it has a more wavy effect and then in between here we're going to add a math set this to multiply so we can control the height if we like. Of course if we need more uh, geometry we can simply add it. If we go too far we get more of a wavy feel I want to, I want those spikes. Okay, continuing on. We are going to then extend it here. We are now going to distribute points all across this. So, uh, distribute points on faces or go to point distribute point on faces. And we don't actually need this many points. So we're just going to lower it down to... Uh, yeah, 1.2 is good enough. And we're, I don't see a lot of people doing this effect. You can actually convex hole uh, distributed points. So you can do a convex hole, slide that in, and now you have a sort of um, triangulated irregular shape. You could further mess with this if, you, if after the set position node you add a triangulate node set and edit it around see what you can mess with uh, I'm gonna stick with fix alternative I like that one uh, and here you can also mess with the level of detail based on how many points you have uh, in your mesh now from here we're going to convert this mesh to a curve and convert it back into a mesh and give it a curve primitive of a circle 
set this to a low radius of 12 of low resolution I mean low resolution to 12 because we don't need that much detail and decrease the size at this point we could probably turn off wireframe view so 0 0.02 is good for now this is our our basic com um, start we now in between the convert we were now going to work in between the curve to mesh and the mesh to curve so in here we're going to add a resample because we want to resample our uh, our um, points uh, I'm going to set it to length as that has worked best for me so far but set it to whatever you like I'm going to now um, set a curve trim curve set it to length you're going to see we're already cutting our shape and from here we can continue I'm going to mess with the seed a little bit get more interesting shapes maybe Okay, I like that one now. It's more my style. There we go. And now what we're going to do is we're practically done with the lines. The I'm just going to tick this end cap so that the caps here are filled up and we don't have a problem there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add these uh, icospheres at the very tips. So we need to find our convex hole. From here we need to split off into a uh, instance on point so that it instances an icosphere mesh primitives icosphere I'm going to raise the subdivision to 3 and instance that uh, alt shift to uh, view the node into into the output and we're going to scale these down 0 0.01 is good so what we're going to do is get a random value with a maximum of 0. Point one one and a minimum of zero point uh, zero five let's say that and then plug that into the scale to get a random after that we are going to control shift uh, right click and join the geometry so we could see them and now we have our um, our meshes together and we can see the icosphere and the stars uh, connecting into the points now we're going to do the scar scatter, the random stars in between. So again, we're going to grab from this convex hole outwards, put a distribute uh, distribute point um, on faces, uh, alt shift, left click, and we'll see the, uh, the points. We're going to lower that down a little bit, not, uh, not too much, but th there's good. Then we're, we could just duplicate this node group, bring that in here, and alt shift, left click, and view the node and edit it further. Make them a bit smaller since they are background stars, per se. And maybe mess with the seed a bit more. Okay. Then we're going to join this up into the join node. Left click. Uh, uh, shift alt, left click. And now we see we have our um, our basic setup. This is similar to the other tutorial again. I'm not trying anything brand new. I'm just remaking that old uh, geometry nodes tutorial in geometry nodes field now uh, with some minor improvements which are coming right now. In this case, I want to make the radius of the uh, lines as they reach the star to th grow thinner or shrink really. Uh, and remain the the center part away from the stars uh, uh, either thicker or just as it is so what we're gonna do is once again in between the curve to mesh and the trim curve we are going to add a set curve radius this is gonna allow us to control the curve radius so what we're gonna do is a uh, geomet uh, geometry proximity uh, we will pl uh, keep it on faces for now. We're going to plug in the instances on points, but as the node suggests, this 
uh, uh, provides instances, not geometry. So we need to realize that geometry. Once we got that set, we can plug this distance into the radius and you'll see an effect. Now, if we want more control over this, we could add a map range node, which if we just do this, set to smooth step, we can then control the minimum amount, which I in think around there should be fine. Okay, and then we could also control the max amount. In that case, like that's fine for me. And now we can see as the points are get closer to the uh, icospheres, they grow thinner. But as they are farther away from it, they remain a uh, let me exaggerate this so you can see it more clearly. They they grow thicker. And we can also control how the fall off width here from the from max. And of course you can then uh plug this into a, an output node like this and have the control in the uh in the panel itself here. But I'm not going to do that because uh, it's relatively simple enough. So let's uh, let's control Z for a moment so that we could just have a subtle effect. I'm not I'm not looking to exaggerate this that much. Okay. And now we need our material. This is a simple material. We're just going to add a new material. Call it uh, glow. It's just going to be an emission shader set to red. And then we're going to add a, we're going to go to materials, set material, glow, and done. We have our glow. Uh, we're going to view this in Eevee as an in bloom. Uh, set our world to black and get rid of the overlays. And we can see that, um, the uh, if we mess with the bloom a little bit, we can get a glow effect, and that is our constellation. Now, of course, you can start wiring things to uh, to your liking to appear in the node itself, in the m modifier itself. That way, you can uh, just you don't have to op have geometry nodes open, but you get the idea. The um, this is uh, simple. Uh, here we can control the height as we did before, uh, but before we did it with a uh, a different modifier. I think we use a displacement modifier, but now we're doing it entirely in geometry nodes with a Musgrave texture, which we could simply swap out for, say, a noise texture. Uh, set this to 4D, or we can swap this out for a wave texture. Just any texture you really like, even one of your own, but you get the point, you get the idea. And now that is really, that's really it. Uh, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you all next time.